Kerry in Montego Bay, Jamaica. See more better with freeprescriptionlenses.com. But call me Mo, Mo Better, because I'm going to have you seeing Mo Better, looking Mo Better. And I'm going to show everyone else how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses when I cut. Transitions extra active with the blue flash mirror. For your Oakley 8123 Sunder, color 01 satin black in the 53i size. Let me take everything out of the original packaging as Oakley sends it to me. It comes with the, the Oakley hard shell case inside in the... Now this is an Oakley, if you don't want to carry the hard case around with you, they have the carrying bag which doubles as the cleaning cloth. Use that to clean your lenses. And of course this is... Of course it comes with a little plastic sleeve on the temple to protect the temples from rubbing together during shipping i'm gonna put that on there when i ship to you but this is the oakley 8123 the sunder color 01 satin black in the 53 eye size and of course it says the name on the right temple sunder now let me begin by saying i am an authorized oakley dealer but as a small independent optician I've been told that I'm legally not allowed to post pictures of the individual frames with prices. So if there's any frame out there you want, you can email me or do what Kerry did. He called me, 919-491-2411. Tell me what frame, model number, size, color you want. I'll check the availability and the price and get right back with you. But let me begin. I'm going to pop out the original demo lenses. And of course, I'm going to put that in there when I ship to you. I'm going to put your frame into the tracing element of my blocker, but first I want to program this shape into the computer 1642 so that years from now, should you ever want new lenses for this frame, I can mail them right to your home or actually in his case, right to his boat because he spends so much time on the water there in Montego Bay, Jamaica. But that way you won't have to mail the frame back to me. I can send you just the lenses already cut to this shape. So... I'm going to hit start. A little stylus is going to pop up and go around and trace the inside bevel of the right side of the frame before doing the same thing on the left. Here at FreePrescriptionLenses.com where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed in quality. You buy a genuine authentic Oakley frame and you'll receive one free pair of clear single vision prescription lenses or non-prescription fashion lenses. My receipt has my federal ID tax number. So if you have vision insurance or unused health savings account flex dollars, you will get reimbursed for this purchase. Now that is the shape that I'll be cutting tonight. I'm going to move on to the next screen so I can enter some of the values. The pupillary distance for your right eye is 31.5. The computer starts at 32.5, so I'm going to hit the minus button twice. That's going to come down. I do want to raise the optical center up 2 millimeters to 20. And I'm going to go 2 above. And I'm going to mark on here 20. And I need to come down here and get your, your right eye reads minus 3, minus 75, or 175. I can tell by the thickness of this lens that this has got to be the right eye. Put everything on zero. Put the power drum back on to, come on flashlight, stand up there, minus 3. Put the lens in the lens. I'm going to rotate until the spherical component comes into view first. That is the minus 3 component of your prescription. Check your stigmatism correction. We're at minus 375, so that is the right lens. Just want to give a shout out to the cleaning crew who's here. Hey Juan or Judith, I'm over here working. You do what you got to do. I'm going to keep working too. So, I got a great cleaning crew that comes in here every night who cleans. Great people, great people. That's the right lens. I'm going to put that on the counter there. We're going to turn the... Check the power of the left lens, minus one and a quarter, minus 175 at 175. Ooh, you know what? I was still on one. Ooh, I'm glad I caught that. I'm glad I caught that. I didn't have the axis wheel right. Measure twice, cut once. The axis should be at 175. I did not turn that. 175, minus three, minus 75. Let's put that back in. Get minus three, minus 75. You know, I'm jinxing myself. I've never sent one. I've never cut one that was incorrect. So I know I'm due, but it ain't going to be tonight. It ain't going to be this one. Minus three. Let me check everything. Minus 75 at 175. There we go. Put an R on here for right. So the one that gets messed up ain't going to be tonight because I don't have to turn the axis wheel again. Minus one and a quarter. Minus 75 at 175. It stays there. 
I'm so glad you have the same axis on both eyes. That's what made me catch that. Put the power drum on minus one and a quarter. Put the lens in, rotate until the spherical component comes into view first, the minus one and a quarter. Check the minus 75 astigmatism correction. That's a second curve. I'm going to put three dots on these lenses. And I'm going to darken those so I can see them. Actually, this lens is upside down. There we go. And this is the left lens. Now, again, if you guys missed any of that, let me recap. <laughs> so, this is a block, or as I like to call it, Jenny from the block. I need to attach this to your lens while it is cutting. That's what's going to hold it in place in the lathe. So I need two double-sided adhesive stickers, of which I've got two here. The black side is the sticky side. I'm going to line up this first block. Put it on the platform. Do the same thing now for the second one. Now on the back is a silver button that is a magnet. It's going to do its job twice. The first time it's going to attach itself to another magnet there in the arm. Pull the paper away to make the black side sticky. Line up the magnet. And the reason why I put those three dots on there, it tells me that it's oriented and adjusts perfectly. The blue cross is the geometric center of your frame. Your eye is just above that and inset inside those orange crosshairs. I'm all about some blue and orange. And I'll show you in just a minute. Minutes up blue and orange that's my oakley so get everything lined up where it's supposed to be check to make sure the lens is large enough and it is i always like to check hit the button the arm comes down places the block onto the right lens we're now going to do the same thing for the left lens put that on there now your pupillary distance for your left eye 32.5 so we're going to tap the plus button twice it's going to go up in half millimeter increments to 32.5 same optical center height pull the paper away to make the black side sticky line up the magnet get everything lined up where it is supposed to be and hit that button the arm's going to come down place the block onto the left lens now this is the edger. This is what's going to do all the work while I run my mouth. It costs $40,000. It weighs 200 pounds and I tell everyone to go out and get their own. Put it on your kitchen counter. Then you can cut your own lenses at home and you won't need this guy with the two thumbs and bad jokes to do it for you. But the cutting wheel is this heavy crusted wheel. Diamond crusted is going to act like a heavy grit sandpaper to grind away the lens material from this size down to this size. This wheel in the center, that channel, that little valley, that's what's going to put the V-shaped bevel onto the lens so it stays inside the bevel of the frame. Now I'm going to go ahead and place the lens into the chuck, or by now you know I like to call it the Charles because I just don't know this machine well enough to call it chuck. I'm going to wake up the computer, 1642, 1642. These are polycarbonate lenses. If they were plastic, high-index plastic, or Trivex, I would select that material. But we're going to stick with polycarbonate. I'm not going to polish the edge of the lens. And I'm only going to put a safety bevel on the rear concave surface of the lens. Hit the green arrow with the start in every language. The door closes. The clamp shuts. The lens is going to be traced by two white styluses, this is making sure that it's large enough to fit into the frame. And you can see as it's going around tracing the shape of the right lens. And the old carpenter saying measure twice, cut once, is measuring the thickness of the lens at every point to know exactly and precisely where to place the bevel so you have the least amount of edge thickness showing, of which you shouldn't have very minimal with your prescription in this frame. Now the light you see flickering is water to catch the optical sawdust. Polycarbonate lenses cut dry, where plastic, high-index plastic, and trivex cut wet, meaning that water sprays onto that lens material for the duration of the cutting cycle. Now water will spray onto this lens, but only for the last 20 seconds to wash away any optical debris that you may see beginning to form on the edge of the lenses now. But as I mentioned, your lenses are made out of polycarbonate. Polycarb is 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic. They're virtually unbreakable. These are high-impact ballistics-grade lenses, the same lens materials that our soldiers wear overseas in combat zones to protect their eyes from shrapnel and from flying debris in their Oakleys. It's also the same lens material that OSHA requires for factory workers to wear on factory floors, mechanics, landscapers, any of that to protect their eyes from hazardous conditions. 
Now these are not safety glasses. These do not have the OSHA logo on there, but it is the same lens material. It also has 100% UVA and UVB protection built into the lens. We know what the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays can do to your skin. Your eyes are eight times more sensitive than your skin. So you have permanent sunscreen for your eyes. Unlike the lotions, creams, and sprays that need to be reapplied every couple hours when Kerry is out on his boat there in Montego Bay, Jamaica. This is permanent and never needs to be reapplied. Now you've got the transitions extra active with one of the six colors of style mirrors. It comes in silver, gold, green, blue, red, or pink. I've done them all but pink. Somebody out there order some pink so I can see what it looks like. But this is the blue. It also comes with its own proprietary anti-glare coating on the back surface so you're not using, losing anything. Transitions were the original blue light protection. Transition Signature 7 block about 30 to 40 percent of the harmful blue light. That is currently more than any anti-glare coating treatment you can get like Crizol Provencia or the blue light lenses that people have. The clear blue light they have in the lenses themselves. Now these, the Transitions Extra Active block 50 to 70 percent of harmful blue light from emitted from today's electronics from cell phones, tablets, computer screens. Now that is a nice thing that it does, but majority of all the blue light you're going to get is from the sun. And again, it will block about 70% of that when you're outdoors. The blue mirror is going to reflect back some of the sun's rays. The unique thing about this mirror coating, that too is proprietary because it allows UV through the mirror that activates the lens and then reflects it back. Pretty cool stuff. Leave it to Essilor. Essilor, baby! to come up with some of the industry-leading technology. I loves me some Essilor. So, I'm going to open this door with my mind. I can do other things with my mind. I can melt ice with my mind. I can. I just got to stare at it for a couple hours. Why didn't anyone ever believe me? Run my thumbnail around to get the optical sawdust that was not rinsed off by the water. We're going to come down here see if the lens fits first time around. I'm going to tuck it in at the outside corner first. Using my thumbs pressed down, it does not go in, so I'm going to take two tenths of a millimeter, one fifth, 0 0.20, off the circumference of the lens until it fits in there perfectly. Hit retouch. The lens is not going to go into the cutting wheel, it's only going to go back onto the bevel wheel, and it's going to take two tenths of a millimeter off going around the circumference until the lens easily pops in there. I could force the lens in there, I could use heat and then force it in there, but it would cause the frame to stretch. Or would we in the industry roll? If you imagine your frame being like a gutter, the bottom of the lens would roll outwards, giving you an ugly cosmetic look as well as shortening the life of the frame. You want a perfectionist like me who cuts every pair of lenses that get shipped worldwide to every country on this beautiful blue planet, green and blue. It only takes a little bit, the yeah, old carpenter saying, is you can always cut more off, you can never add it back on. So it only takes a little bit at the beginning. That's the difference between ordinary and extraordinary, is that little extra at the beginning to do it right. So it takes me a minute longer. So be it. Now a lot of places that cut about a thousand pair of glasses a day, they have bosses that tell them you got to get it out, you got to get out, hurry it up, force it in there. I take care to make sure every pair of lenses is cut perfectly. Even if I check myself here, live TV, I see that that was off. I rotated until it was perfect. And the day will come. I do not walk on water. And I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. But a day will come where I will miscut a lens. When that day comes, I'll have to email the person, call them up, let them know what the delay is. But I'm not going to send out any subpar prescriptions or glasses. That's the thing with the internet. It only takes one bad review to ruin you. I make sure everything is done perfectly. So I'm going to tuck the lens in at the outside corner using my thumbs pressed down the nose. Uh, still does not want to... Yeah, let me take another tenth off. Another tenth. One, two. We're now at 0.3. Three tenths of a millimeter. Hit retouch. Now I could come over here to the sanding wheel this edging wheel that has the same thing it has a little groove just like the bevel wheel that it's going on to i could go all the way around and i could do that but i spent forty thousand dollars on this equipment i'm gonna let it do the work 
speaking of not walking on water, there's only been one recorded person who has done that. I want y'all to see what I've done. I was inspired after sitting in Easter services. There was a big, big wooden cross on the pulpit and it reminded me of this frame that has a wooden type of feel to it. So I went home, I have these crosses that a guy makes and he passes out at a convenience store that he's just supposed to carry in your pocket. I drilled two holes in them, bolted them onto the frame. I'm going to paint these red for the stigmata and then I'm going to put a red dot down here too. And these will be for sale on my website under the brand I316. That is spelled E Y E. 316 it comes in brown it comes in blue red and purple i only have the brown red and purple i'll get the blue up on the website ironically blue is the last color i done you think that'd be the first color i do because i loves me some blue but that's just the next stage of my development i'm going to start doing my own frames this is some of the very beginning designs who knows 10 years from now what i'll be designing but for now we're starting there you have to start every journey with a single step that's my first step so I'm gonna run my thumb around clean off any of the optical sawdust tuck the lens in at the outside corner push down now it snaps in there easily so I'm gonna record that I cut this three tenths of a millimeter small minus 0.30 that way years from now if you need new lenses I know to cut it three tenths of a millimeter small so it'll fit right into your frame so we're going to take the left lens, put it into the Chuck, the Charles, the Chucky Baby, the Chuckarama, or tonight I'm calling it the Carry. Hit flip that over to L, hit start. The door closes, the clamp shuts. The lens again will be traced by two white styluses, making sure that it's large enough to fit into the frame. And you can see as it's going around tracing the shape of the left side of the frame. And then measuring the thickness of the lens at every point to know exactly and precisely where to place the bevel so you have the least amount of edge thickness look at that extremely minimal with your prescription now you're not gonna have any on the left side your prescription is almost twice as strong on the right and you barely have any so let me go ahead and that's why i use the polycarbonate lenses because i can get them thinner pull the sticker away use my hand approved drying method throw that in there add that to my sticker collection i see the PD dot on there lightly. I'm going to darken that. Come back down here to my lensometer. I don't have to turn the axis wheel because it's still on 175 for the left eye, which is the same for the right. Put it in over that black dot. Read the power. And I am getting minus 3 in the red. That's because you are nearsighted. You need 12 steps of farsighted correction to see clearly. Everything is much too large that's why there's a minus sign to minify the image down to the correct size now once it's the correct size you have three steps of astigmatism correction you have a minus three curve on your eye you have another steeper curve minus 75 this way that's how we line up those two curves to make everything nice and crisp uncorrected astigmatism makes sixes and eights look alike of the letters p and f it's just the second curve we're going to read the power there minus 375 one tick mark away from four that's because you remember high school algebra we add two like signs together yeah don't worry i've forgotten that too let's use today's terms someone borrowed three dollars from you and then they borrowed another 75 cents they would owe you 375 375 in the red now your left eye you only need five steps of far-sighted correction same amount of astigmatism correction same axis fortunately for me so Think of the axis as the fine-tune knob. It tells us where to turn the power of that second curvature. A straight line is 0 to 90 to 180. We're going to turn it just past the, almost all the way to the 180. We're going to stop at 175. Now this frame, the Oakley 8123 Sunder, comes in a couple sizes and a few colors. All of them sell for 233. The Transitions Extra Active Gray adds 129.99. The mirror coating in any six colors adds $69.99 for a total of $432.98. Now, the mirror coating can only go on Transitions Extra Active Gray or Extra Active Brown. There is an Extra Active Green, but currently as of now, you cannot get one of the mirror colors on that. So,
So a little lever is coming out. That's what's going to put the safety bevel on the rear back surface of the lens. Water is spraying onto the lens, which tells me it's in the last 20 seconds. So in just a moment, I will take the left lens out. It should pop into the frame because it's thinner. Which means that thinner equals a weaker power lens. You don't need as much correction for your left eye as you do in your right. It's very rare that people have the same power in both eyes. It's even more rare that someone has the same axis or that someone has the same astigmatism. Look, I got a wet finger. That someone has the same astigmatism or the same axis. You have a 1 in 180 chance of having the same axis. And it's actually kind of unique that you do. So, come down here. We're going to grab your frame. Tuck the lens in at the outside corner. Push down with my thumbs. It snaps in easily. Take the block off. Use my hand approved drying method. Throw that back in there. Add that to my sticker collection. Come down here. We're going to put it in above that black dot. I don't have to change the axis. I'm only going to check the power. And I'm getting minus one and a quarter. One tick mark past one heading towards two. You have three steps of astigmatism correction. If all goes well, one and a quarter plus 75 equals two. Check the second curve. We're at minus two. So that is cut perfectly. Pupillary distance for your right eye, 31.5. For your left, 32.5. For a total of 64. We're going to turn the card around. Place the PD stick against my thumb on your right lens. We hold it up to the left lens. We're getting 64 millimeters. So that is cut perfectly. The optical center height is 20. We're going to measure from the middle of the bottom of the frame. We're getting 20 millimeters there. 20 millimeters there so that is cut perfectly now this is the portion in every video that as i clean your lenses i mentioned that this purchase is tax free and includes free shipping anywhere in the u.s now here's what i do for international shipping and this is what i was telling carrie i charge 35 dollars up front for international shipping because it seems to vary day by day even to the same country of jamaica so when I were to print out your label, if it actually comes to $21, I would refund $14 back to your PayPal account. Having said that, Carrie has a daughter in Gaithersburg, Maryland, who's coming down to visit him. If I had thought about it, I would have come down and go on his boat out there in Montego Bay, Jamaica. I've never been to Jamaica. Man, I want to go to Jamaica. Carrie would invite me down. I'm sure he'd say, no problem, man. Come on, let's go out on the boat. But his daughter gets to. Maybe next time, Carrie, buy another pair and I'll deliver the second pair. But this purchase is tax-free, not because it's on the internet, but because I'm in North Carolina. My state considers eyeglasses a medical device. There is still no currently no tax on a medical device in North Carolina. So this purchase, which would have been $432.98 times 8% sales tax, would be an additional 3463 that will not have to be paid because I am in North Carolina. All the other states have to charge tax on glasses, not me. I also have free shipping to anywhere in the US. But when you get these when these are delivered by your daughter, there's a small chance that these could fit too loose or too tight. However, there's an 80% chance that one side is going to sit higher than the other. That's because 80% of people have one ear that is higher than the other. And I'm no different. I'll show you in just a moment. But because of that statistic, 99% of all optical shops will do free adjustments if you ask them. But I'm going to get these in standard alignment, also known as a three-point stance. The three points are one, two, and the bottom of the frame being three. I set them on the counter and press down. There is no wobble. Now, normally, when I take mine off, of course, I'm wearing the, the Oakley 8132 cross range switch is called that because if you pull down on this lever you can change the color of your temples although you can still get another one but that orange will always be there when i put this back on that orange will be there regardless of what other colors i can put on there but these are known as pilot temples if you can imagine a world war ii fighter pilot wearing a hard helmet you can slide the glasses on and off while wearing a helmet you can still do that now with a motorcycle helmet or any other thing like that versus a spatula curved skull temple. You would have to take your helmet off to put on something like that. Now, normally all of my glasses, as you can see, will wobble when they sit on the counter. These pilot temples are almost self-correcting. I've never had a frame that I didn't have to adjust the height of one of the temples because I'm part of that 80%. I have one ear that's higher than the other. Let me put mine back on. 
so I can keep working. Flip these over, press down, there is no wobble. Close each temple to make sure they overlap perfectly, and they do. Check the tension on each spring hinge. If one was looser or tighter, I would adjust for that. But also make sure the temples are, are uniform and that neither is askew. Now this is what your lenses look like before they have been activated. By the way, I send out a selfie request in every package. Carrie, I would love to have a picture of you wearing these things indoors as well as outdoors on your boat where we can see the blue mirror. I also send out cleaning instructions not only for your frame and your lenses, that, but also so that you can keep your case, the, my, the premium microfiber cleaning cloth that I provide, your Oakley cleaning cloth, so, and your case, so those two will last you for years. No other seller does that on the internet. I've been told by people who buy from me, who used to buy from a lot of the other companies out there, those corporate giants who don't take the time to explain all that to people. Now, I also field test every cleaning cloth to make sure that it works. So when you get these in the mail and you see that wrinkle, Carrie, you know that it works. You can't say that it doesn't. But this is what your lenses look like the first time. Now, here's a good point. These are the Transitions Extra Active. Let me use this. These are your clear lenses that came out of the frame. They still retain about 1-2% to 2 color. I'm wearing the Transition Signature 7. That retains about 3-5% to 5 indoors. The Extra Active is about 5-7%. to 7 You can only see that over a piece of white paper. Once you put them on your face, dude, unless you're an albino, and I'm not saying that in a mean or provocative way, unless you're an albino, you're not going to see any color of the lens regardless if it's a Signature 7 or the Extra Active. But I just want to point that out on paper where you can see that. When am I going to clean it? There's so much dust floating around from this edger. Let me go ahead and get these activated, which means I'm going to expose them to a strong burst of ultraviolet light. I'm going to put them in my little transitions box, and as you can see, it takes about 30 to 45 seconds for transition lenses to darken. It takes a little bit longer when you come back inside a minute to a minute 15 to return back to virtually clear. Now, Carrie and everyone else, this is important. Pay attention. All transition lenses will get dark on day one and continue to darken every day for the first two weeks they're exposed until they get to their maximum darkness. After that, they will work for years. The only time that my Signature 7 lenses won't work is if you're behind the windshield of a car. Your windshield stops all the harmful ultraviolet rays from coming in your car and making your dashboard crack from sitting in the sun. Now, these carries transitions extra active will get 30 to 50 percent dark behind a windshield if you have a convertible or a motorcycle or a boat all transition lenses will get dark now they're also temperature sensitive meaning they'll get darker when it's 85 and below than they will when it's 95 and above but i remind everyone when it's 100 degrees outside you're miserable they're miserable nobody works 100 percent when it's 100 degrees outside they're also temperature sensitive as i mentioned so now, these are the Transitions Extra Active. They will get darker in hotter weather than the Signature 7. So in Jamaica, where it's very hot, especially out on the boat, these will get darker. Now, you can see the blue mirror at certain angles. This is really cool. Now, I should have showed you mine next to I have the Cruzal Sapphire. This looks like Cruzal Sapphire on steroids. But when you look out, you see the Transitions Extra Active gray. When people look at you at the right angle... You're going to see that blue mirror that is really cool the other nice thing about the mirror coating not only does it look cool but it will reflect back the sun's rays making your lenses feel even darker that's why sunglasses have mirror coatings it reflects the sun's rays and making it feel even darker and darker now as i keep talking these will get lighter and lighter now that i've taken out of a strong exposure but this is what they look like while if I can have a dark background while they are blue and the last of that before it fades back to virtually clear. So if you've liked what you've seen, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can follow me on Facebook and Instagram as freeprescriptionlenses.com. On Twitter as freerxlenses. You can email me if you have any questions at freeprescriptionlenses at gmail.com or simply click the contact me button. The other thing you can do is call me at 919-491-2411 like Carrie did and ask if you can get a Oakley because again, I am an authorized Oakley dealer. I just can't post the individual frame pictures with prices on my website. So just let me know what model, what size and color and I'll, I'll get on the, my computer and check on the price and availability for you. And of course, every frame comes with one free pair of clear single vision prescription lenses with any add-ons available. 
So again, Carrie in Montego Bay, Jamaica, thank you for the purchase of the Oakley 8123 Sunder, color 01 satin black in the 53 eye size. And everyone else has got the chance to see how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses. Thank you.